we are already okay so right. good morning yes good once morning. again good morning to yes everybody who is good watching morning. us on linkedin and uh, also uh, youtube and facebook listening to us in clubhouse it's a pleasure to have uh, you again this morning but uh there is also another thing that uh, we're very happy about Today again, we have Binati Shet with us, and we're going to talk about a very, very pleasant topic, I believe, uh, which is uh, emoticons and emojis in um, different cultures. So we're going to, to see how some, how the meanings of some emoticons actually are different in uh, India, in Japan, also in our home cultures as well. Just to start with, before I give the word uh, to Binati, I wanted to say that I did a little bit of research about uh, emojis and learned that uh, the first uh, emoji set was released by J-Phone in Japan in 1997. So, uh, and then uh, two years later, a Japanese artist actually developed, um, some, well, the, let's say the drawings of uh, even more emojis, the colored ones, because the first set was black and white. Uh, and then, Yes, J-Phone later uh, became uh, SoftBank, actually. And, uh, well, uh, the emoticons, they continued to develop and uh, many more were added later. But, uh, well, we're going to talk about how we sometimes misinterpret uh, the, um, let's say, the meanings of uh, emoticons and how sometimes uh, they, are, they become the reason of jokes also, um, let's say, misunderstanding and uh, so on. So, Binati, I'm going to let you talk first. And, uh, okay. of course, uh, Tim and I, we're going to, to share our stories. We encourage everybody who is in the audience also to, to share um, their stories as well. You can join us here on stage in Clubhouse or on LinkedIn with comments and YouTube with comments as well. Binati, the floor yes. is yours. Of course. Hello, everyone. Good morning. And emojis. I mean, what do I tell about emojis except doing this? Because they are so much fun, right? <laughs> Anytime you get an emoji, it's 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 like, say, for instance, that laugh cry emoji. I think I use that a lot. Anytime uh, a friend tells a joke or thing like that, saying he, he, typing he, 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 or ha, 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 ha. We all do that, but much better than that is a representative face that's just lamowing like this. Like it, 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 it. I, I don't even know how to make that face because do we ever laugh, cry su such that our eyes slant up and like there's water running? No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't really happen. But the sentiment is there, which is that the joke was funny to the point that it brought tears in my eyes. So emojis are my preferred uh, means of communication when it comes to uh, talking to people who prefer emojis as well. And I, I believe there are entire conversations that have happened without the use of, in, of one word, just sharing like uh, memes and things like that on Instagram and reacting to the memes using different, different emojis. So skull emoji for dark humor, laugh emoji for the funny stuff, uh, the okay emoji for oh yeah i really liked it thank you for sharing it with me or uh had the heart had the heart emoji i totally forgot i had to do this i hope uh, the filter kicks in at some point uh we're gonna see but uh the point is uh emojis are a language i know a lot of us would not agree with that and uh, i see where you're coming from from a linguistic standpoint but they are language to a lot of people. Like I know young people who, uh, and I'm not calling myself young, but I, I, I have seen uh, younger people in the family and things like that legitimately have entire conversations on their phone using those <laughs> representative face. And they, 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 they also have this uh, coded language, right? So an emoji looks like one thing and it might represent something else which leads to like a lot of let's say secret language amongst uh, the 
individuals involved in the conversation so what might be one emoji might actually be interpreted as something else i think maya this is the perfect moment for you to share your story so take the floor <laughs> i mean i think that's that's what should begin this conversation <laughs> right yes indeed so i have to say that well first of all i came to japan in 2001 so it was very soon maybe what it is uh, four years after the first emoji set was released and back then i had those um, what what are they the foldable phones that everybody knew back then you know the garake phone and uh, i remember that when i came here so basically uh, i came after uh, my husband and i we got married very soon after that and uh, he was very busy all the time you know he would work 20 hours a day and then come and come home and uh, you know just go to bed and so on and then we communicated mostly by messaging uh, each other on the phone and i remember one day uh, that i was talking about i was messaging him about something very pleasant you know and uh, trying to say this or that and then I thought that it was very nice to use, um, you know, an emoji that looked like, a, well, a sweet to me. Do you know, do you remember those French sweets that are called merengue? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure that I, I pronounce them very well, but they look really nice. They're made of um, uh, egg whites. And if you add brown sugar and cocoa, they look brown. And they're so very sweet, you know, and very tasty. So I used the, this one and basically I looked for emoji which <laughs> which uh, I wanted to, to you know, to, to use instead of <clears throat> the sweets. And I use this one here, which is the mo em emoji. It turned out later that it was the emoji for poo. Of course, I, ha I had no idea because you can see, you know, the, well, let's say this, uh, this, this picture here of something looking very yummy and so on and so on. And of course, I was amor amorous and so on and so on. And then later, my husband just said, he, he messaged back and he said, what, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're sending this to me, you know. You're talking about something pleasant and suddenly there is the emoji of poos all over the place. And I was like, excuse me, you know, I'm sending you this because it looks like something that everybody loves at home, back home. Yeah. And then... Yeah, and he was like, no, not really, because here, you know, in this emoji set, it looks, no, it doesn't look, it, it's just a poo. And it is used, you know, when you want to say that somebody is talking BS or whatever. So this is, you know, the first, yeah. So this is the first time when I realized that there are so many different meanings to, you know, even one picture, one emoticon here. And it was really, really strange to me. But then this morning when I was looking, you know, at the history of emoticons here in Japan, I also found different entries on Google. And then some of those entries were, what is the meaning of eggplant, the eggplant emoticon? Or what is the meaning of peach, peach, sorry, a peach emoticon? And it was so strange to find out that they had totally different meanings to what I imagined. So, um, okay, I have to say that, yes, the peach emoticons, um, basically they often come with, I think with some sexual meaning. Yes, yes. it's an innuendo, oh, it's no. an innuendo. I'm glad I never used it. <laughs> Me too, yes. That's what I'm saying. You think you are sending someone a photo going i had peaches for lunch right and then next day surprisingly you are being invited to hr and you're like oh. Why is hr calling me i just sent them peaches and the person who got the peaches was like sexual harassment and you're like what it's a peach yeah. or it's a yeah. plant like what is what what's happening but that that's that's what wait, wait, coded. The egg plant. have the become egg coded because now they have become language right yeah. when they began they began to represent expressions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now there's like an entire sub language that people have created amongst each other. If you don't want to say some, some stuff, say, for instance, I, mm. I, I, I want to invite someone over for a booty call type situation. Right. And my parents just hypothetically keep checking my phone and I can't use those words specifically. So instead I use emojis. They'll not know. And, you know, <laughs> things of the sort. It's like us writing in cursive. 
Right, yes. <laughs> <It's right>. opposite <laughs> way. No. Wait, yes. wait, wait. I, I got... So what is the eggplant emoji mean? Okay, Tim, I already tell out to you, if you don't okay. mind. Okay. What does it look like? You, you, you ask yourself, what does it look like? <laughs> Okay. okay. Is, it, is it naughty? Yes, if it's naughty, naughty, you don't have to read it. And we are on we are on LinkedIn as well right now, and everyone on LinkedIn probably is like. Okay, so this is not appropriate. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Exactly. Yes. Okay, okay. Not safe. For I don't work. want to know that. I'll look it up privately. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, cool as I am, I don't even know this stuff. Okay, let's <laughs> move it on. Nothing uh, to see that, here, that's folks. the thing, right? I, I was taught this by a friend of mine named Riddhi Sharma. She told me that, uh, and I believe there is some uh, psychological name to this as well, where you don't assign malice to anything malicious on right, the go, right? right? Because a lot of the times, what seems like malice is actually miscommunication. So, like, just ask for clarification because oftentimes, I think with emojis, this applies a lot. People yeah. are using an emoji because it looks cute or it represents something to them. Yes. Now, the zeitgeist around that emoji might have changed and you might never know what it means. Uh, I had that happen with like this emoji in particular where uh, I use it for okay, right? And yes. apparently now for the younger audiences, this is seen as passive aggression. This this no. takes into account. And see, this is it. I'm like to us, exactly. Yeah. To us, it's like I just said, okay, why are you getting mad? Right. But to them, this registers as hostile. So it's a choice at the end of the day. Do you want to ruin someone's day or yeah. do you want to be like nice about it? And make a little initiative and learn about things. So I, I always go for the latter because you at least get to have fun conversations like this. <laughs> what does that emoji mean? Like, tell me, tell me, yeah. youngin, tell me, explain it to me. And they do. They love it. They are like, mm, senior mm. Uh, education moment. Let's go. <laughs> I, I was say, just some observations. Like, I feel, I, I think it's pretty self apparent it's language. I mean, if, if sign language is language, why wouldn't emojis be language? You know, it's just symbolism, right? It's visual, right? Yes. Uh, so one, I think it's, we all know, Japanese people are very visual people from a very young age. Calligraphy, kanji, it's pictographs, it's meaningful. You know, so right there, they got that visual orientation. I see it in everything, the way they write their manuals. And I mean, that's pretty much. And of course, they invented the emoji, which shouldn't so surprise anybody. And just observing my friends and wife, they almost all, they use emojis a lot. But I think the language of emojis in Japan is not the same as the language of emojis in America. Like, I don't think they use the same emojis necessarily, and they use it in a different way. And there's this economy of thought that's in embedded, baked into the emoji. Like you said, instead of writing, ha, 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 that's a simple, but a really good example. Boom, it's right there. It just nailed, which is kind of like kanji. Kanji, boom, it hits you with the meaning, right? In, the, in my mind, I have, you know, because I was westernized how to read the alphabet, First, you convert it to sounds, and then the sounds have meaning, right? With the Japanese, a lot of times that's a direct, you just look at it and you see the meaning. You see the meaning. I think your, your mic's off, by the way. I, I kept it off on for purpose because you don't want to hear, hmm, ha, yes, 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 in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, keep it off. <laughs> yeah, and so anyway, yeah. I see a lot of it. My, my wife does it. And also, my friends are all my age. I can touch type. So I'm really mm -hmm. super fast. Not on my phone, but on my computer. They can't. Most of my friends. Okay. So to avoid having to type, too, the emoji is just really easy. Boom. It just gets the idea out. Anyway, just some observations. But oh, this is enlightening for me. Thank you for, for um, uh, uncovering all these blind spots. I have many. <laughs> like There was some study. I don't really recall when, but 
they found out that emojis and cow emojis and things like that they are linked to intergenerational miscommunication right so i oh, think yeah, it's okay. it's a cluster right like emoji language like most languages there there's a reason why i like calling it a language because the behavior around emojis is similar to the behaviors that we observe in any language say for example i pick some reference from gujarati you know so the reference is called sangrelo saap right if i translate it into english i suppose it would be left over snake or uh, no kori mono hebi that type of a thing and uh, the story goes uh, a family finds a dead snake in the house they are like hmm the thing here is gujarati community has always been associated with trade right historically speaking so trade <clears throat> means not wasting any resources that come your way and finding a way to sell stuff so the family goes hmm we can keep this dead snake somewhere it might be useful so they take the dead snake and they put it in the balcony a uh, sangrelo is something you collect and put in places where you can store things uh, based on gujarati architectural design that would be in the ceilings so uh, exposed ceilings uh, so mm. <laughs> an eagle one day is flying and the eagle has like a massive gold bangle but the eagle is very hungry and it can't eat the gold bagger the eagle spots the dead snake in the balcony and the eagle goes mm, wow hey be son i want to have a snack so the eagle drops the gold bagger takes the dead snake and flies away and the gujarati peeps get free snack ah uh, sorry gold snack from the dead snake so that is a reference right within like let's say gujarati speaking community that if i say something like left over snake in english people are like, what is what is she on about what is she on like what 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 kind of she, what is this left over snake right but to a gujarati person who hears sangrelo saap they are like oh makes perfect sense so i feel like emoji communication is like that as well within a particular group each emoji will represent something i'll uh, refer to like a tiny little community uh, started by Mir uh, miriam macmillan uh, she's based in the uk and I, that's how i befriended the likes of <clears throat> mel and jeff and all of these wonderful people now we like to talk about llamas right llama the animal and specifically the drama llama that uh, where people act dramatic for no reason whatsoever so we we use the llama emoji and to anybody who probably looks at the chat they're going what's wrong with these people throwing in llamas and to us it's the most hilarious thing ever because there's reference references amongst the little group that okay la, drama llama and we have a llama in our life it it, it, it means something very very specific to this group so i feel like uh, if i were to use an emoji on my post and we can definitely talk about that because if you see a lot of like these influencer posts on linkedin they have started incorporating emojis in their posts right to drag attention uh, to get attention or increase retention on the post i think that's also a sign that emoji is seen as a language by a lot of age groups and the message is kind of spreading you see and you learn yes uh, i was thinking yeah. also llama, yes llama, <laughs> llama yes okay. i'll send yes. you a that that's that's the absolute representation of a drama llama it comes walking very sassily <laughs> then it looks at you and it just turns away and walks away and i'm like exactly that is what dramatic people do they ruin your life for a little bit and then when you ask them what's wrong they are like hmm, i don't talk to you and they go <laughs> <laughs> right but you know i this morning again i was thinking how while listening to you binati talking about um, you know the uh, emojis as a reason for miscommunication between different generations and then my my mind went back 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 you know thousand thousand years uh, of years ago and you know people started communicating via pictures that were chiseled you know on the walls of the caves they lived in right yes and those are these those were pictures and it's it's funny how we're going back to that you know communicating via pictures and of course the means and the tools we are using are very different but still it is um, 
I don't know, just like a full circle. We're coming, you know, um, and it's, of course, once again, uh, we have to be very careful how we use the emojis. And probably it's also important to use, to, to be careful how we use them between or when we communicate with other generations, but also with other people. And also, I think that it's important how emojis are used when um you know companies try to market themselves on social media as well because it could be such a pandora box there oh yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. we have right. the child abilities coming up right you're going to see those women emojis in all the posts i'm mean, like the, seriously like the, the part oh that it is progressive to add a woman yes. emoji to your post just because it's an international women's day post you could just say women instead like what why would you do this? But yes, as as you said, people don't often think of emojis as language, right? They just look at it as represent like something cute, a graphical element to add to your thing. And maybe chances are no. Uh, people who see it as a language are going to take uh, offense with improper yeah. usage of emoji. Yeah. Right. Okay. So... Binati, we, I, I think that Yuka wants to, to talk with us. It's a little bit, uh, I, I don't know, from Clubhouse, the sound is a kind of uh, low and um, I'm not sure that we can communicate very well, but Yuka, could you please try? Yeah, um, because, you know, the, you know, I'm not the only one who loved to ask Binati the, this interesting, you know, topic, right? This is a very interesting topic. I love talking about this. Um, and then, you know, the, I, I gather, <clears throat> excuse me, those like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people can hear me, but, uh, and then I can, we can hear you, Maya, because you are in the clubhouse, but, you know, Binati and Tim, it's kind of very faint, but we could hear them. Oh. So I'm hoping, you know, this, you know, the Tim and Binati can hear me. Um, I have a question, actually, I thought the Tim just earlier made a good point, you know, the emoji uh used differently based on where are they used in like maybe this is comparison between maybe you know american teenagers and mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me japanese teenagers but i thought maybe the intent is the same you know like a okay economy of mm -hmm. words you know like a you know the japanese kid you know, they always like a, you know mr donuts is misudo the mcdonald's you know the makudo you know they, they love to shorten the words right but here, you know, I see the teenagers, they text. I cannot tell what they're saying, you know, like, a, <laughs> like a, in my humble opinion, it's like I am a, like I am a child. So I can guess. But when they use the acronym, you know, maybe acronym is different from emoji, but I thought that the intent is the same. In the teenager, I think they also teenager want to fool the parents. They don't want, you know, parents to understand what they're chatting. Yeah, yeah, probably. So, also, oh, oh, so you could hear me, Tim? Good. I can hear you perfectly. You can hear yeah. me, okay? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, good. 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 Yeah. The so clubhouse just fixed it. Okay, great. It's Thank you. Wonky, hasn't it? The clubhouse has been so wonky. I don't know what's going on, but anyway. Yeah, I love the. So I'm hoping they could continue. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I hope it indeed because what uh, what is uh, strange to me sorry just this is a divergence i know but because everybody binati and uh, tim both sound through my microphone in clubhouse so there shouldn't be any difference uh between the the volume of my voice and uh, binati and tim's voice is there but obviously it is um i don't know it makes a difference there and hopefully did you, did you make any adjustment now maya because no, you guys are now coming no. through better Really? Uh, no, I didn't. Hmm. But okay. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. No. Um. Hmm. It's yeah. Um. It those like a, yeah. It's this emoji. It's like a. It's yeah. A, like you know, is it really a language? And I think it is because it's a you know that, that exactly that means right. It's a pic language. A yes. Picture words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh. I, it's. Oh, go ahead, Tim. Yeah. No, I, I again, I mentioned earlier how even in the business world, even in like, again, my background, manufacturing, I remember the first time I, I was working for a Japanese guy. Uh, he was a really good boss. And 
he was very visual. And when he would put a schedule together, this is before they had all the scheduling programs on computers. And he would, he, everything was so visual and compact, but you could see it in, in one glance. And basically he was, his schedule was to say, okay, we're, we're shipping raw steel from Japan to California. Then we're going to truck it from California to Tennessee. And so he had a map of Japan and he had pictures of boats with coil steel on the back of them arriving in San Francisco. And at the top was the date that it arrived. So you could see where it is at what date. And it was all in one glance. And it would have taken like eight pages to write it out in, in, in words, right? This is how they communicated. And the Japanese would complain that Americans were too, they were using too many words and they wanted to see more visuals. Um, and then the other thing they used to say is during their presentations, uh, you know, from my point of view, Japanese cram a lot of information on one page. But what they are looking for is how things relate to each other. And if you don't cram stuff on a page, you can't see how stuff relates, right? So anyway, those are just some of my, so it makes sense, the emoji thing that it came from a Japanese mind. It, it's really how their culture is oriented there. It's like baked in from the time they're very, very young. Anyway, my thoughts. Yes. Yes, that makes sense. It makes sense indeed. And once again, going to, you know, to the different meanings there, because obviously uh, the emoticons, they came, they originated here in Japan because of what um, the Japanese culture is and how, uh, you know, people here try to really apply that economy of words, economy of thought. But then um, when I look up, looked up the meaning, uh, once again, you know, of uh, different uh, emoticons, you know, the emoticon that is just three water drops so uh for me personally i always use it when i i want to say that something has been hard and i sweated a lot right and then so but what happened basically i checked it out and it turns out that the meaning is not that <laughs> it's just water you know splashed somewhere for some people it is uh well the meaning also has uh, what's that some sexual connotations depending on what they're trying to express but there's so many surprises there and uh, also i want to say that the sexual connotations come from different parts of the world not not from the japanese uh, um, way of using that gosh. that emoticon in particular I'm afraid to use emojis now that I'm hearing all this stuff. I, like, I'm kind of scared. No, they're safe emojis. There are safe emojis. I'll let you know what the safe right, right, emojis right. Okay, yeah. But yeah. even if you look them up, even if you look them up, like Maya said, like now I'm going to want to look them up. But even if you do, there's no guarantee that the person you're sending it to understands it the way that yeah. dictionary, the emoji dictionary says it is, right? So yeah. even then... Even if you do it correctly, you could be misunderstood. Yeah. yeah. I think what Yuka said kind of makes sense. See, the intent is keeping communication in a particular group, right? Rather okay. than opening it up. I think the intent is to have a conversation without like other people understanding. Imagine being a CIA agent, right? And... Uh, Cryptologist. People are discussing like uh, Machiavellian plans using emojis and you have somebody who's obviously older like that's how they joined like uh, covert operations in the first place and they're like what 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 why are there so many eggplants and apparently you know <laughs> eggplant could refer to something else <laughs> oh, <it is. laughs> and something not not nsfw something else in that particular uh, terrorism community and that's how right. they are trying to communicate. The point is that the other person should not be able to decode what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. So you kind of uh, create a language within the group that only the group gets. And you'll observe this a lot in streamer communities, right? People who do online streaming, who have these communities. So they have acronyms, obviously they do. And mm -hmm. uh, they also use specific uh, emoji combinations 
that yeah. their community understands if you are entering this community and hypothetically people are throwing like a lot of puppies at you you are like what what did i why am i getting so many puppy emojis thrown at me um, <laughs> apparently that, <laughs> that that could mean something something in that group like say oh you are so uh mm -hmm. innocent or so cute or so happy or so friendly maybe i'm just going on hypotheticals because you know you don't want to uh talk about any particular streamer i i don't follow streamers so i don't really know but i've observed this from uh, the chat room chat spaces so right. is, there, is there a emoji translator maybe in chat gpt like you just take the conversation you load it in and say tell me what this Can you translate emojis? Let's see what ChatGPT does. Because that would be interesting. Yeah, uh, I have a story I'll about. I'll let you know what the results yeah. are. I have a story about uh, generative image uh, software, image generating software. So basically, when I tried to create the the visual, I mean that you know visual which I just shared uh, today, I I go I, I gave a prompt, you know. Uh, well a pastry sweet that looks like a poo you know and this was part of my prompt and right. then and then bing actually didn't give me back uh, any you know, output because uh, what i got was a message and it was like um the standards. yes or something like that prohibited yeah, right, right. prompt or something like that so obviously poo the word poo is um, you know a uh, community censored or whatever you call that you know in, in, oh my god yes so i couldn't Protected get children <laughs> so so i couldn't get the image there so i had to go back online you know and look for um pictures of real sweets <laughs> so it was yeah we have to be careful there obviously um and then once again uh you know there are words that we can we can use and others that are taboo online and uh, maybe be not to your point probably chat gtp and other gen ai generate generative ai they create you know their own community jargon and yeah. uh, vocab dictionaries basically yeah. so yeah i don't yeah. know but yeah we we are we are human beings and we like to congregate like in small groups or bigger groups uh find our tribe and uh well basically uh define what we are and create our own dialect yes dialect as well yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's fine uh, but it's it's really amazing how we have been using emojis and just now i realized that probably some of the emojis i i have been using i have been using you, them I, in have a, you guys hear the word the stamp scamp um I haven't heard that hear one. Again? No, uh, Binati or Tim? Hello? Was it scamp? S C A M P or S T A M P? Yeah, good, good question. No stamp, like a like a postage stamp. Ah, stamp. stamp. Yes, yes. I think oh. Japanese stamps, right? You're talking about the stamps you get at. Uh... <laughs> Sorry about oh, that. Sound effects. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, because to me, I don't think that you know Japanese kids use the term emoji anymore. Anymore, I may be mistaken, because you know they got, because it's almost like a stamp. You know, they got, mm -hmm. uh, they put like "arigatou gozaimasu" those words in a stamp. So they just uh -huh. almost you know rather than you know like a you know the typing the word "arigatou okay. gozaimasu," they put that like a, those square in a stamp like. A, they just boom you just pick and you know, hit as a stamp and just send it out it's, it's a more speedy way of communicating with each other so i don't think I've, i'm hearing the word emoji as much as i used to mm -hmm. i thought that maybe that may be the case with you guys or i know i'm in like a, i'm in a maybe in a different cave yeah i don't know i think i've read about like eki stamps right that japanese railway stations are doing you could get those stamps it's got like graphic imagery and some that's right uh, that's especially the new year greeting almost uh, the, nobody said ari akemashi to mito gozaimasu these days they didn't even say happy new year they just put the stamp oh my god you're not supposed to say it i say it it's just so yeah, you know, much easier do. to do that right yeah. we're dinosaurs we're, we're dinosaurs, dinosaurs. 
but I can tell you, yes, uh, it's funny because the other day we received the uh, um, it's like a, a hagaki from somebody okay. I don't know, but obviously you know a friend of my my husband. I'll be thrilled. Yeah. Okay. And then we received that hagaki. And uh, mm -hmm. so that person was, uh, he wrote on the Hagaki, well, thank you very much. Uh, you know, I have been using Nengajo for many years now, but I have decided that from next year, I'm going to switch to email and uh, uh, digital messages uh, when, I, when I wish uh, Happy New Year to people. And I was thinking, you know, even I, like, my my mother-in-law she still uses hagaki but even people from my generation are already i mean i have already switched to that but anyway uh, other people from my generation are switching to digital means of um wishing a happy new year or saying akemashito medeto gozaimasu or so on so obviously everything everything and everybody is moving into that direction um yes uh, no, but we I, have to I, uh, I'm getting invitations over WhatsApp to things, right? People are no longer sending invitations. On a paper conservation front, I am so happy that you uh -huh. don't get like a stack of expensive cardstock and, yeah. uh, you know, the, which I'm essentially bad. gets wasted unless you, you know, do trash panda things with it, which is what mm -hmm. I do. But yeah. you now invitations are coming in video formats and in text formats with... Uh, links and qr codes and everything and i'm like even the gift like even with gifts you are directly sending money via you india has this thing called upi right so you could uh, scan and pay it's done it's very quick no cash required no like uh, uh, secret uh, codes with banks and all that required you just scan someone's upi id put in the money uh, and then the money goes to them so that's how a lot of us are sending like gift money to friends and things like that. And on one hand, it is so like so efficient. And it is, I, I think, comparatively speaking, so good for the environment. <laughs> However, on the other hand, it's like, where is the personal touch? Like, where is it? Like, wh wh where is that care with which you pick a gift for someone, right? Like, uh, I know this person like so and so. But they already have this. So maybe I could acquire this by thrifting this. Like you put in a lot of thought behind an actual gift. And now it's just like boop, 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 done. It's yeah. good. Yeah, but no, it's sometimes, good. You know, sometimes it it's feels efficient. Hmm. It's efficient. We've gone with efficiency. But I think I have a little bit of a different take because I remember a time when correspondence was rare. Okay. You right. Would, so your Christmas cards and your greeting cards were your once or twice a year chance to connect with people that you never had a chance to talk to, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so even then, when I wrote Christmas cards, I hate getting Christmas cards with no note. I, if it's just somebody else wrote the poetry and they just signed it, it means nothing to me. But if somebody takes the time to write out at least just a little short paragraph, hey, how's everything going, blah, 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 blah then you got that personal touch, right? But now year round, every day we're communicating online. We're, we're always connected. And if you aggregated our time over a year that we're talking or interacting with relatives and people that back in the day would have been once or twice a year, maybe there is more of a personal touch, but it's more ongoing throughout the year. And the maybe the importance of the greeting card has diminished a little bit because we're always connected. It's not like a one -year thing. I don't know. That's kind of how I feel like we've evolved. And yes, it's efficient. And and the personal touch has gone away. So anyway, yeah. my, my perspective. You know, the greeting card, you know, because I, you know, so it was a hustle for me because, you know, we don't keep the postage these days anymore. So mm -hmm. I have to go to the post office and then ask the, you know, the guy to measure my card because I yeah. have something something within the card and so like I okay i hope you know my friend will appreciate my efforts of sending this because i could have just said hey thank you in my email so i think it, yeah i think tim is right but you know going out of your way sometimes 
you know, touch it, sort of like, you know, it, it carries some meanings, I hope. Yeah, sure, sure, for sure. Mm. Yeah, yes. I also think that, once again, is, uh, you know, uh, as Tim, as you said, so because we are connected all the time, we communicate all the time, so um, the, um, what's that? Uh, basically, the specialty of just sending cards once a year or twice a year has, uh, it has disappeared. Because, I mean, in the past, that was the only chance, basically, to tell people what you are up to and what you, you achieved or, you know, to say just, uh, I hope that you, you're fine you're, and your next year will be good. But now we know everything uh, yeah. about people we communicate with, right? And people are on social media as well. So it's not yes. uh, just like we commun communicate only by uh, private messages, but we read other people's posts and so on and so on. Yes, so it's really, well, um, the way it is. And we got uh, a comment from Diana Green on YouTube. So she wrote, do you think that caveman's paintings was the first emoji and over centuries we have adapted, we now use emoji on IT? That's kind yes. of what you said, yeah, earlier, Maya. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you missed that, Diana. We talked about uh, something yeah, similar. Yeah, exactly. We are reverting but, back to when we started, right? Language, essentially, if you trace the origins of language, language was used uh, in its rudimentary stage. People would grunt to each other, right? Just, just like how we hear animals make similar sounds. Uh, that's how we used to communicate with each other as well. Uh, given our ability to form words, to mm -hmm. quote an example that is in uh, Yuval Noah Harari's Sapiens, uh, you, your grunt could convey there is a threat, right? You just grunt going, a uh, uh, lion is coming or something. Not not a lion, like a predator is coming. But if mm -hmm. you use language the way that we do now, where you say there's a lion by the pond that's come to drink water, so might as well avoid it. So instead of like one grunt, you have multiple grunts, each representing something else. And then that kind of kept evolving, kept evolving, which is why if if there is this thing, this is still theorized, this is not proven. It's called the common language and ancestor, right? PIE, Proto-Indo-European. And every single language in existence has right. something in common with every other language in existence. Mm -hmm. right? yes. So there is a common language ancestor. We all learned from somewhere. And while we don't really remember what that somewhere is, remnants of that language are there in every single language in existence. And I believe that type of thing began when cave people used to huddle around, right? And I think it is difficult for us to imagine what life was like at that point in time because we have our comfortable houses and we have... Uh, means of communication, even if you think of like, say the 1990s, because I'm from the noughties, I was born in 93. So uh, I don't remember a time where you would, you just are alone, like 100% alone with your thoughts all the time, because we had TV, we had libraries, we had school, things of the sort. I think a lot of uh, people who gave birth to language as we know it today, I think they had a lot of time, right? A lot of time to think some of these things through. And they weren't as specific as we were, but I would suspect because you and me exist at this point in time, uh, I, I suspect that they were more efficient than us because for them, I think things, something like the cave painting is uh, about letting people know that I was there in this cave, right? That's it, probably. We don't know. Uh, something like scribbling an animal on the cave means, oh, I saw an animal and it looks like this and it changed my people. So I draw an animal, I draw my people, done. Uh, the stuff that we do nowadays, right, which is we look at an image and we get the message from it first, but then we kind of also try to dig deeper with the message if you know if uh, you have anxiety then that's 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 just part of the process but uh, 
I, I think this is this is where uh, a lot of communication for the Gen Z people, right? Because I, I, I wouldn't want to uh, talk about older people. I don't really know how older people use these kind of languages. Uh, but how I've seen younger people use them is exactly this. They want to convey something and these symbols, these acronyms, they convey it amongst each other. So uh, I think the purpose is clarity of communication. And they are using these symbols amongst each other for that. So yes. in many ways, we are going back uh, or the newer generation is taking us back to where we started, which is good, I think. Yes. In yeah, we're going to start grunting pretty soon. I mean, <laughs> have you talked to somebody younger, like say a teenager? <laughs> They do that. You talk, you they ask do. them something, they're like, hmm, go away. Hmm, go away. Hmm, go away. <laughs> so they are doing that. That's funny. Now, I, I can see my, my daughter's, you know, answers to my questions in, in a new light. Because whenever I ask her a question, instead of saying hi or ie in Japanese, you know, she says, hmm, hmm, you know, hmm. <laughs> Which is... <laughs> exactly or something like that and i'm like what's that you know it's not a word come on get your words out of your mouth so it that almost we can... sounds passive aggressive <laughs> yes we should play that game too we should play that game <laughs> oh, man. yeah it's really oh wow okay so but still i think that it's on us you know upon us actually to to teach the younger generations to communicate by using words as well not only emojis because uh, once again, Binati, you said that uh, yes, uh, it is once again it's easier for the Gen Z, I believe, uh, you know, to uh, convey their emotions and thoughts via emoticons. But at the same time, they can be indeed those emoticons. They can be um, a reason, you know, a source of uh, very big misunderstanding. So once again, words. <laughs> I don't know. I'm too old fashioned, I believe. But I say even words have the ability to be misunderstood, right? Because uh, yes. something, let's take that passive aggressive example saying based on our last email or based on our last conversation. A lot of people are seeing that as passive aggressive as well. And it's like, no, I used it to say we had this discussion before. I'm not being aggressive by saying that we had this discussion before. I'm just saying we talked about this. It's not aggressive. Right. Using the words, right? Without the emojis. Yeah. So I think it's about the person at the end of the day. Languages mm. do what you ask them to do. And at the yeah. end of the day, it's about you, right? What you ask them to do or what you take from them. You could, uh, there's like, I just saw uh, uh, Instagram reel where someone's talking about Romanian and how beautiful it is because of it being a romance language and I'm like yes but then isn't every language a romance language is it's there's a reason why so many kids exist there's romance in every single language so uh, <laughs> this, is, this is what right if 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 you have that angle I, I have a preference uh, towards like Japanese and Russian literature I can mm. go out there and say, this is the most best, most sublime literature ever. And it might be true for me, but I, I think it's not true for everyone, right? It's just the meaning that I found in the directness of these two literature, literatures, mm -hmm. it, it called to me, right? So I, I think this is it. Uh, words like emojis have the tendency to be misinterpreted and interpreted. That is why I think this is one skill that has gone away from education, school education specifically, uh, that is critical reasoning, right? In terms of, uh, and reading comprehension, Mo more reading comprehension than critical reasoning, because right. yeah. you're supposed to catch the intent of the author and not project your own drama on what the author has written. So I think that is something that has uh, kind of changed. So Well, I, but just to, my generation was accused by our parents of being poor at critical thinking. I heard it in the 80s, 70s, 80s, know, 90s. Everybody says this. Or maybe it just keeps getting worse or it's just the next generation. 
No, I, I think know. it is it is hubris, right? Because uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. often times we say this to yeah. discount, right? We say this to discount uh, the uh, abilities and the accomplishments of the person that we are talking to, and one of the easiest ways to do that is say, "Oh, you lack critical thinking," right? Like. Uh, right, right, right. And, yeah, the generation gap is there too. But speaking of passive aggressive, I have a question, and and this is it's not an emoji, hmm. but I read somewhere that the younger folks, dot dot dot, is passive aggressive. I'll be right back. I gotta help my. But is that oh, true? Is that, that's not I don't I mean. know. I use dot 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 all the time. What? What? I, think- I don't. Dot dot yes. So for some generations, using dot 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 is passive aggressive because you don't want to express your thoughts or because uh, you want just to imply a meaning that they wouldn't like. Oh, so like you are keeping things unsaid for a purpose, and that is rude. Yes. Oh, yeah, makes sense. I've never like <laughs> been accused of being passive aggressive, but I use dot dot dot. Like it is, I I use that to imply a pause. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh, See, the more you learn all the time. Yes, but you know, the funny thing is that I realized that I have never seen an emoji dictionary. Like, there are many entries on Google and I believe other search engines. I have sent you the chat on LinkedIn. Uh, Chat GPT is translating the emojis. So, there you go. (laughs) Yes. But the question, though, is with Chat, chat GTP, it is well. There was there was a discussion about it that it is based mostly, or it draws data from uh, the Anglo-Saxon culture, right? And yeah. so the translation of the emoji will be probably biased towards the meanings that are, um, you know, implied there. So I believe that once again uh, we come to the point of uh, culture and how, even though. Chat GTP creates that uh, yeah. dictionary. Uh, mm. Probably it will be biased towards you know the the meanings of, of the emojis in uh, the Western world. And but if you ask them in ask Chat GPT in Japanese, it will learn. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's the yeah. No. So <laughs> that's why we call it prompt engineering. The way that we define the prompt I, determines I, the response. The, it's database. Yeah. Right. So it's, the, yeah, basically we have to go out there and ask as many questions in Japanese or any other language uh, different from English, per se. Yeah. There's a very so. funny thing that the young people have discovered, right? Uh, which is uh, chat GPT, apparently in French, is cat GPT, right? Like how you would pronounce it. And it sounds uh, like cat. Sha, sha. Basically, sha. GPT. That sounds apparently. <laughs> Like I farted, right? And yes. A lot of young people are like, "Cat, I farted," and everybody on French news is obviously the French don't say Chat GPT like Cat GPT. They say Chat GPT, but because like the technology is, I suppose, intimidating, so some like uh, bilingual speakers went, uh, "Cat, I farted. Cat, I farted." Look at French uh, news journalists saying, "Cat, I farted. Cat, I farted. Cat, I farted." <laughs> This became right. a thing significant enough that the likes of Hank Green and these are big uh, YouTube people, specifically in terms of uh, communities that they manage. Their community is called Nerd Fighteria, and it is one of the most incredible places to be in. And uh, everybody is so happy by calling it Cat I Farted. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, <laughs> this is the level of uh, humor we are dealing with, right? So. <laughs> But, you know, it's also funny because, uh, yeah, like when you think about the character of a cat and, okay, the, the cat as oh, cats as species. So mm-hmm. cats can be very, what's that, um, elusive? Maybe this is not a good word, but I don't know, Tim, maybe you can help me, but they can be dismissive too of anybody yeah. else because they cats think that... Drama <laughs> yeah, they're drama yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. Of course, I, I'm sure that chat GTP does its best to, to answer every question. But in a sense, uh, it could be it could be likened to, 
to a cat because the other day the other day i, I actually, activity is more like a dog than a cat because oh, uh, oh okay that's a good thing actually yeah. i agree there yeah. you when you give me a prompt <laughs> that, that's what cat <laughs> because the, you know google you know the bar the, they are more cat like maya yes Which, you, know, you, uh, you yes. Know, google yes. Uh, this, is the, this, this is how we can conclude this uh, this is how like if we are writing a very cryptic only for japan expert insights post cat a cat gpt <laughs> is a dog where bard is a cat and anybody who reads this will go what what <laughs> and then, you know next you thing, I it, right? people think farting is so funny uh, well, I think you know, like especially in the, in our American kids, they think the farting yeah, is so hilarious. hilarious. But don't we don't we all fart at you know, some <laughs> point in our life? So, for the I longest time, I thought women did that. not fart. I really believed that for a very long time. Oh, so you don't fart? Oh, okay, sorry. No, I I just I I, I never heard a woman fart until I was really well into my teens. So it was a. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I was shocked the first time I heard it. Okay, I have you know, heard that like, was the thing, right? Yeah. In etiquette, that women are not supposed to fart when people are around. I don't know. I'm 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 thirty, so I have that going for me. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> okay, so it depends on age. So <laughs> I, I can let one rip, and people can absolutely judge me. I don't care. Like I don't want my intestines hurting me. If if you have a problem with somebody farting, like please, twenty first century, we all fart in peace. You were you are dying in the fiber. That's good. <laughs> right. Sorry, yes. where I'm sorry, I'm I'm taking this conversation to a wrong way. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Okay, I will bring it back then. So we have I, another. I think has done a great post, by the way. I just remembered he talked yeah. about Japanese emperor's fart management system. Where there were people whose sole job was to take the blame for the farts made oh, yeah. by the Japanese royal family. Remember that the way? Like I paused and laughed because imagine having that job. That's I why I had a dog. I blamed it on my dog. My <laughs> that was my dog's job. Oh, why did you do that? <laughs> and then my wife would get mad, would get mad at me for blaming the dog, so I couldn't <laughs> win. So. Right. Okay, so let me read. There is another question, or a couple of them actually, on, on YouTube. And then one of them is, um, uh, graphic symbols used in public places to convey instruction, for example, slippery road symbol tend to be global communication. Yeah. Do you think... Uh, future generations will use emoji in uh, culture unification of emoji, and are are these symbols already regarded as emoji? I mean, what they are available on the emoji keyboard, right? If you look at the emoji keyboard, I don't have my device. I'll bring my device. It's got like this massive list of things that yes. classify under emojis, right? So you could. Yeah. Uh, Oh my God, it needs my face. What is wrong with it? So right. you could look at all of these road signs and things like that. And they are displayed on the emoji keyboard. Like say, uh, oh, oh, right? oh, here. Okay. Almost there. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So if you go like this, mm -hmm. you have all of these symbols, all of these symbols. Road and signs. then if you scroll to the very end, all of these road sign type things, they are, are there. Kind, yeah, yep, they are there. They are, all of them yeah. are there. So yeah. in in many ways, they have come into like, I suppose, uh, people use that stop sign emoji, right? I've seen it in TikTok, I've, not directly, but like screen grabs of TikTok conversations because TikTok is banned in India. Uh, the stop emoji, right? The stop sign. So if someone right. is being ridiculous, people just start spamming the stop sign in the comment sections, things like that in book talk, I believe, book TikTok community. So uh, it is in many ways uh, leading to common communication systems within groups. I don't know about like an overall unification, but I believe every community will have its own uh, 
emoji language that somebody on the outside would like what are they on this it will be fragmented it, it, our, oh our yes it will be fragmented I like will fragment yeah 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 yeah. As it always has been, I, I think that was that was the purpose of having so many different. Like, if you just look at India, we've got so many languages. I don't even know how many at this point. I, I, Google it, but it's a lot of languages in just one country, like one apparently geographical country, which has, according to Google, uh, seven hundred and eighty languages that are in play right now, spoken, not counting the dead languages. So mm -hmm. it's <laughs> one small location with, so the, technically speaking, all of these languages existing doesn't really have a purpose, right? The purpose is to keep that specific culture intact. Right. And I, I think there's beauty in that. So just like how we have our conventional languages, I think community behavior, because we, we don't take into account that entire generations that have been born with these devices now exist. And yeah, no, how communication the, happens on these devices is different, right? So the, the way they fragment, it's similar yeah. to how we use languages, but then it has its dissimilarities. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I think I think we'll see something, something interesting, because one thing that we've noticed in linguists, linguistic circles is uh, neologisms right two things specifically neologisms is when you combine two words and make a new word mm -hmm. and that new word gets accepted in the zeitgeist it takes time nowadays it doesn't it hits like this very very quickly that very, word is yeah. adapted and uh, spreads around and absolutely becomes part of normal discourse for the cycle of the meme so to speak and then right. there's a new and then there's a new word similarly the speed with which words change meaning nice the word originally meant precise mm -hmm. we don't use it as precise right it's gone through an entire journey now uh, oh yeah interesting but yeah. That I, I think that's a good that's a good future topic language i really do that that could be explored and just a, as a little teaser i when i moved to hawaii mm. There's a local language called Pidgin. And I actually oh. studied it when I studied linguistics. And oh. the idea is there's no superior language over another, right? Mm -hmm. And the human ability to organically create a new language happened because you got Filipinos, Japanese, Chinese, Native mm -hmm. Hawaiians, all these ethnic groups thrown together, working a lot of them on plantations, and they had to communicate with each other. Yeah, right. And nobody came in and designed a language called Pidgin. Mm. It just evolved. And they all spoke different languages, but they had, to, they had to trade, they had to talk, they had to work together, and they organically evolved this Pidgin language. And if I listen to it, I can't understand what they're saying, but the locals who grew up there Mm -hmm. That's their, their own foreign language. And the fact that humans have the ability to organically create a complex language with its own set of grammar and vocabulary, to me, is just amazing about like what our brains and our as communities, what we're capable of doing. So maybe, a, you know, just language in general would be an interesting topic for the future. Yeah. What I love about our community is we don't end any conversation on, hmm, we are done talking. We are like, we will keep talking. Yes. <laughs> so we could come up with like an emoji conversation for this. Like emoji. a recycle emoji and then a speaker emoji. Going, we're <laughs> going to keep talking about this the next time we meet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then there is another idea which uh, comes from Patrick Powers in uh, Clubhouse. And I'm going, uh, of course, Patrick, going hello, Patrick. To... Thanks for coming. Uh, I want to talk about this in a future future session. But Patrick wrote, actually, um, film director Werner Herzog said of AI that it was primarily focused on trendy things and that he wouldn't use it in making his films because yes. he wants to keep dreaming. And I think that this has really something, a lot to do actually with language, with mm -hmm. generative AI, and also how, uh, you know, it will impact 
our ability to dream and imagine new things, just yes. like energies, I believe. So, um, as you said, Binati, we are not done. <laughs> we are yes. not done. No, I'll just add one thing to that, like that thing about Werner Herzog, right? The young people have taken that and they have created this entire sub-genre called mm -hmm. Sad Beige. I'm not yes. even joking. B-I-E-G-E, -E, the color. Sad mm -hmm. Beige. They have created this entire sub-genre of content around this Werner Herzog quote, where a lot of like big brands and a lot of big agencies are going so into minimalism that it just looks uncreative. And uncreative. they have used the words of Herzog and created Sad Beige. And to like elevate this, I think Werner Herzog has some architecture thing and his entire website turned out to be beige. So that meme kind of solidified. So right. I'm seeing something that profound led to young people creating mm. content <clears throat> around, I suppose, sad beige. It's, yeah. it's intention not really aligning with action, but then leading to creativity nonetheless. So right. yes. win win. Okay, we'll continue then and we're well past nine o'clock <laughs> yes. so thank you i had i had a good time I, thank I you so it. much yes Binati That's and you and everybody who joined us the conversation via messages or you know uh directly from clubhouse thanks so much we'll be here once again uh, next week this week as well we continue we're not done talking and uh, we so have a great have a great day everybody and uh, see you see you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.